Hey everyone, welcome back to Mashup Math. Anthony here, and on this lesson, we get to visually explore that relationship between square roots and perfect squares. So we really get to visually explore that question, what exactly is a square root? Let's go ahead and take a look. Hey everyone, welcome back to this introductory lesson on square roots and perfect squares. So we are going to start off our discussion by looking at a rectangle, and this rectangle has a width of 4 units and a length of 8 units. Now we're going to envision this in terms of area, so that width of 4, think of that as 4 equal size units, that will split it up along the width, and then for the length we have 8 equal size units which we'll split it up along the length. And now we have these squares that make up the inside, the area of that figure. Length times width, in this case, four times eight, which we know is 32. So the area of this rectangle is 32 square units. So now let's look at what would happen if we cut this rectangle in half. So now instead of it being a four by eight rectangle, it's a four by four, which makes it a square since all of the sides have the same length. The area of this square, 4 times 4, we know is equal to 16 square units. And this relationship allows us to say that 16 is a perfect square, and also that the square root of 16 is 4, since 4 squared equals 16. And we can think of this relationship every time we think about perfect squares. Now, for example, if we took this 4 by 4 square, and cut each unit in half to make it 8 by 8. Now, if we counted up all those squares to find the area, or just multiplied 8 by 8, 8 squared, we would get a result of 64 square units. So 64 is also a perfect square, and the square root of 64 is 8, because 8 squared will equal 64. So now we can say that a perfect square is a number that can be made by multiplying a whole number by itself, by squaring any whole number. <laughs> cool. So now we can revisit the two perfect squares from earlier, and that was the 4 by 4 square and the 8 by 8 square. Now 4 times 4, if we think of this in terms of area, is 16, which is equal to 4 squared. <laughs> And 8 times 8 is equal to 64, which we know is equal to 8 squared. Notice again that 4 and 8 are both whole numbers. Now, if we take the square root of 16, our result is 4. And if we take the square root of 64, our result is 8. So the most important thing to take away from this lesson is that relationship between a perfect square and its square root. And now we can explore that relationship a little bit more. Let's take a look at an example of a perfect square of 25 and a non-perfect square, 30. Now 25 is a perfect square because 25 is equal to five squared. And the square root of 25 is equal to five, which is a whole number, so by definition, everything works out. A non-perfect square, 30, if I take the square root of 30, I get approximately 5.48, which of course is not a whole number. So there is no whole number that we can square to get to 30 the way that we can square 5 to get to 25. Now, 25 and 30 are pretty close to each other in value. And if we think about these two numbers in terms of area, again, we know that 25 is a perfect square, that has dimensions 5 by 5. And if we think about that area, in comparison to that 30, if we slide it over, we see that it kind of fits, but there is some room left over, that orange space, which doesn't quite hold one full square. It only holds about half of a square, which is where that 0.48, that decimal, comes from. And again, this is because there is no whole number that we can square to get to 30. We'd have to have a decimal value in order to approximate a square root for a number like 30. So now we're going to go ahead and visually explore some of the most common perfect squares and their relationship to their square root. So 1 squared is 1 times 1, which just equals 1. 2 squared 
is 2 times 2, which equals 4. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which equals 9. 4 squared, again, 4 times 4, which equals 16. Again, these are all perfect squares. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared, 6 times 6 equals 36. 7 squared is 7 times 7, which equals 49. 8 squared is 8 times 8, which equals 64. We actually looked at that one earlier. And 9 squared, 9 times 9, is equal to 81. And the square root for each one of these perfect squares is the value that you had to square to get it in the first place. So for example, the square root of 4 is equal to 2. The square root of 9 is equal to 3. The square root of 16 is equal to 4 and so on and so forth. And this is why raising a number to the second power or the power of two is referred to as squaring the number. So those are the basic concepts involved with perfect squares and square roots. So keep that in mind as you continue to build upon that understanding and apply it to algebra and more advanced levels of mathematics. And we'll catch you guys next time. All right, so that's it for that lesson. Hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please click that link below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We add new lessons every week. We don't want you to miss out. And also, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to comment down in the comment section below. We respond to every single comment. I promise you will respond, even the mean ones. Okay, but let's just try to keep it nice. Those ones are always a lot more fun to read. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. See ya.